Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is May 2nd, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, I right around the table today, we have myself, Kevin Martin, Bruno Varachton, and Chris Stern. Anyone else who uh, joins us, will welcome them in as always. But for now, we'll go over the agenda and take things from there. Uh, so for today's agenda, I have uh, status on the weekly release 2.456. Uh, the next LTS release we have coming up, 2.452.1. Uh, Security Advisory published earlier today. Uh, update on Google Summer of Code acceptance and projects. Uh, small notes on the contributor spotlight and what the plans are uh, for the next few posts. Uh, some notes and updates on the version docs project. Uh, just a few more uh, recently merged or in progress PRs that we've been taking a look at that we can um, note there. Uh, the ongoing discussion of the deprecation of Blue Ocean and what that means for documentation, tasks involved, and what we can do to get ahead of that. Uh, and last thing I have on the agenda here is just a quick housekeeping note from Mark. He is unavailable for Doc's Office Hours Asia later, so uh, that has been canceled and removed from the calendar at this point. Uh, and I already checked with Bruno and Chris about adding anything. Seems like everything's covered, so we'll go ahead and get started. So first up, the weekly release of 2.456 was built and delivered. Everything went well. The change log automation is continuing to uh, work as, as we know. Um, the current 2.457 draft change log is in progress and being updated. Uh, there was an entry missing from the automated change log, but Basil caught that and updated accordingly, so thanks to him for his work on that. Uh, the next LTS release is going to be 2.452.1, as I previously mentioned. That's expected to release on May 15th, 2024, so just a couple weeks away. Uh, the release candidate was available, uh, made available earlier this week. Uh, Alexander Brandis is the release lead, so thanks to Alex for his work there and creating the checklist. Um, the backport candidates have already been taken care of. Uh, and I've already created the change log and upgrade guide. Uh, I've gone over it with Mark. Mark and Darren Pope are going to be using it for their What's New in LTS video. Um, so uh, everything's been uh, arranged and grouped together and merged. Change log is ready to go at this point. Um, so we're just waiting on the release and it will be ready. It'll be live. Uh, and then the next uh, update or item on the agenda was a security advisory that was published earlier today. Um, it's not, it doesn't affect Jenkins core. It's strictly these four plugins. Uh, however, the script security plugin specifically, uh, is a high severity and these, uh, vulnerabilities do need to be addressed. So anyone using the script security plugin, want to make sure you update that immediately. Um, the other, uh, plugins have issues that are not as severe. So, uh, still good practice to make sure everything's updated, but the script security one, especially, uh, should be addressed as soon as possible. Uh, thanks to the Jenkins security team for all their work and making sure that these biodiversities get published and put out there and for uh, just resolving these issues in a really timely fashion and helping the project and community. Uh, next up, so this is going to uh, be the Google Summer of Code uh, part of the agenda. So uh, we actually just published this last night, um, but uh, yesterday was the day uh, where Google Summer of Code announces the projects in uh, proposals that were accepted. So thanks to everyone who participated, everyone who submitted proposals. Uh, we just want to say thanks uh, to everyone that's part of this. And I want to make sure we also thank the org admins, Bruno, Chris, uh, Alyssa Tong, John Mark Massen, everyone that's uh, part of this is really crucial to how it functions and that it actually gets off the ground. So thank you. Uh, that being said, we've got the five projects here, managing Jenkins, CI, GitHub permissions as code, uh, using open rewrite recipes for plugin modernization, implementing UI for Jenkins and for statistics, enhancing an existing LLM model with domain specific Jenkins knowledge, and improve maintainability for the repository permission updater. Uh, so these are all really nice projects that are intended to help the, the Jenkins project as a whole. And with the intention and the projects, uh, which all of these are linked to their project proposals and project ideas pages, so you can find out more. Uh, but these are all really exciting, really encouraging, and uh, are on the path of helping keep Jenkins modernized, updated, 
um, and in line with new technologies, functionalities. Uh, I know Open Rewrite is uh, one that's been getting a lot of notice lately, so that's great to see. Um, and things for like getting our statistics in place is re- going to be really nice. Um, the repository permission update is something that we uh, have to interact with a lot. So if we can get that, um, you know, automating that or just having a little less hands on in the term in the sense of uh, updating those things, that's great. So um, again, big, 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 big thanks to all the contributors. Congratulations to all the proposals that were selected, and uh, and thank you so much to anyone that didn't submit a proposal. And uh, even if they weren't selected, that work is amazing. And, um, you know, there's always next year. So uh, never give up, don't ever stop. Uh, and keep in touch, the project's always here. We're not going anywhere. You can always follow up and see if that work is something you want to continue doing. So um, by all means, it's uh, it's not the end. It's just a not for now. Uh, and that being said, uh, at this point, now that we have been, uh, we have announced the projects, the community bombing period is be- has begun and it's already started. There's a lot of activity in the Gitter channels with the mentors interacting with the contributors uh, and aligning on ways to communicate, way to stay in touch and what they want to do for next steps. So uh, super encouraging to see all that. Really lovely just to have that interaction. Um, and again, thanks to all the mentors and contributors for their work. Uh, Bruno, Chris, before we move on from Google Summer of Code, is there anything else you want to share for insights or notes? No. Okay. Cool. That works. Uh, so next up, we have the Contributor Spotlight is our going as well. Uh, I'm going to be published up next, so uh, we'll get that going. I'm working on that myself. Uh, I'll be asking for a review from others since I can't review my own work, so um, I'll get some help from there, but uh, yeah. And then after that, Alyssa is also uh, contributing her response. So we'll have that for after mine. Jan Farachek's agreed to submit his. So when he's back from vacation, we'll have that. Uh, we were discussing uh, other uh, uh, contributors from the previous Google Summer of Code, uh, like Van Diet and Harsh, who have done a lot of work and have contributed quite a bit to Jenkins. So um, we're reaching out to others. We're going to get some more. Uh, and Alyssa is getting in touch with other contributors to find out if they'd be open to submitting their response. Um, we went with a, a very specific subset of contributors at first. Um, so now we're expanding that a little bit more. Uh, things have changed in six months uh, or, or, you know, uh, we're now approaching a year since we uh, started gathering data. So yeah, um, we'll see what happens there, but more to come. Uh, the next item is the version docs project. So this has been something that uh, has had to uh, just be off to the side a little bit lately as the Infra team was working on cloud cost saving measures. Uh, now that that's under control and we're getting to a point where everything's uh, man- very, very manageable and uh, things have calmed down quite a bit, the Infra team is able to now uh, pull back the version docs work so that we can host it accordingly. Uh, so that's going to be part of they're one of their upcoming milestones. I, uh, they just started one, so I don't think it's going to be this uh, one here, but the next one after that, I believe, uh, is when they said they can start to work it back in. So uh, Hervé is on top of that and um, is aware of the work needed for that. So it is part of the plans going forward. Um, I've been doing some uh, more review on the version doc site locally. Uh, thanks to Chris for helping me get my local uh clone up and running. I was having some issues with some of the instructions so um, and found that my issue was I was too far ahead uh, in my node version so we had to downgrade that and get things uh, squared away. But uh, long story short, thank you very very much Chris for helping me get that squared away and allowing me, uh, making it possible for me to continue my review. Um, Chris, is there anything else to you want to share any other notes on the version doc stuff that to jot down here or, or we're just working on it and kind of waiting to see what the infra team says next yeah so uh we're waiting for them to hoist the current version before we update the docs inside and uh we're going to continue working on the gatsby side too it's a two parts to the website one is the gatsby side and one's the end to side right right um, and for anyone not aware, the Gatsby is for the site generation aspect of things like security advisories, download pages, other parts where 
Um, it's not a static documentation sort of build. So that's super crucial to a lot of the other parts of Jenkins.io. So um, yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate all the work you and Bundy have been doing and are continuing to do. So uh, yeah, just fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so next up, so we have a few uh, pull requests that were recently merged or that are being worked on. Um, Beyond Firecheck opened, updated the main open graph image. So now we're using the updated uh, Jenkins image. So uh, that's great to see. Nice modernization there. Uh, and Jan's also been working on adding a dark mode to Jenkins.io. This is really great. Uh, it goes based off your computer, uh, excuse me, your computer settings. So it'll respond based off what you're already using, uh, which is great. I think it's a nice look. I personally love dark mode. Uh, it's a lot easier on the eyes. So uh, really excited about that. Um, Jubenic had his, uh, been updating it as well, saying like what other work needs to be done, where other pieces need to go. Um, the plugin site is separate from uh, Jenkins.io, as is the contributor site, as is the story site. There's a few places that the work needs to be done, but uh, it's being addressed, and John's going to continue to work on that one again once he's back. And then the other piece of information I wanted to point out, uh, so this is something that had been uh, being worked on by Stefan Speaker. Uh, it's adding the concept of a test pyramid and some examples. Um, thanks to Uli, Basil, and Mark for all contributing some suggestions and feedback for making this better. Um, they helped get this to a much better place, and it's been merged, so now it's part of the documentation as well. Um, so thank you to Jan, thank you to Stefan, all the work you uh, are doing really felt really nice and uh yeah it's just great to see the community work together on these uh additions and then um again i'm just going to move this up here since the last topic i have is the blue ocean deprecation stuff but um again mark it is not available later for docs office hours asia so that's been canceled um it's been removed from the calendar so uh, there isn't going to be any meeting later, um, just as a heads up, but uh, providing there's no issues, everything should be back to normal next week. Uh, and then the last topic I had was the deprecation of Blue Ocean and what kind of documentation tasks we've, we can come up with for the time being. Um, so we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight uh, and frankly, we can't do it that quickly just because there is uh, very large users that are still relying on Blue Ocean. And if there's not a good replacement in place, then they need to rely on this still. So uh, granted, there is the Pipeline Graph View plugin, and that's a really great alternative to uh, a good amount of what Blue Ocean can provide. Uh, it doesn't cover everything, and there are some use cases where Blue Ocean might be important. So we're not going to force anyone to change uh, right away. But with that in mind, the deprecation is something that's going to happen. And we can get ahead of that by figuring out what sort of documentation tasks would be necessary for that. So there's Blue Ocean Pipeline documentation uh, as a whole that can be moved or removed depending on how we go about it. Um, and let me go ahead. And um, so, yeah, so there's this whole section of Blue Ocean documentation that um, yeah, a good amount of this probably wouldn't be necessary for the pipeline graph view, um, pipeline run details, pipeline editors, activity view, like some of these things are just not part of it. So we were talking about potentially just adding in a separate section under pipeline that is pipeline graph view or pipeline graph visualization, pipeline visualization, something along those lines that gets the point across. Um, and then, uh, some of the other things that came up was, you know, we have the tutorials that that mention Blue Ocean or that talk about Blue Ocean. Um, Blue Ocean has its own set of tutorials in that sense. So there's a lot of stuff that we need to decide whether or not we're going to remove or redirect from, uh, and or, and this is something, uh, Chris, maybe you can give a better idea of whether or not that's the if possible. But um, one of the ideas we were talking about uh, last week and since then is that. Uh, if the Blue Ocean documentation is not part of the latest set of documentation, um, would it be 
possible that the default just doesn't include blue ocean and uh that and the in the sense of like if the version documentation is always going to be latest and we say the blue ocean documentation stops with you know uh 440 which was the last lts baseline uh, would it be possible that it's just not even shown not even present in that latest in that default if it is relegated to older versions or um would it be something that we'd have to kind of uh maneuver with in in that sense to make sure it's not uh, getting you know old information essentially at that point yeah, I don't understand like what you need to do, but I think it's like um we can go by version. So it's like if it's like a positive inversion, it won't it won't it won't um show anymore. Would that be okay? Yeah, and so and that's the thing is that's um and you're saying you're saying if it was like for the defaulting to latest, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think like that's the kind of thing that I I think would actually be a really good solution at the end of the day. Um, as long as the Blue Ocean documentation is not being carried through to later versions, that's really like the crux of it. And so if we can leave it behind in older versions or just make sure it's not brought to latest or what, you know, whatever version we're up to, um, I don't know if there's a way to say it stops that, you know, this LTS release or this, um, point in time. Yeah. I think it works that way for Antoa. Cool. So yeah, so then that's an, so that's another option that we have in terms of just how do we corral this stuff and how do we make sure that it's not um, kind of run, not running rampant necessarily, but so that it's not lingering around and creating a, a point of contention, point of confusion for readers. Um, yeah, we, like basically, we just don't want to uh, have anything outdated that people could be you know getting confused on or misinformed by anything like that so i, I if it's if it's not going to show up by default that's great that's a step in the right direction okay yeah cool ship and then um yeah and so like i said other things we'll need to do is update the tutorials and some other pieces of documentation that refer to blue ocean um we have the blue ocean status already uh, as a part of Blue Ocean documentation. So this is could be something we update once we know uh, when that deprecation would be happening. We can start to warn users about it through the status notes. Um, there will be communications of all sorts when that sort of, when that comes down the pipeline. Uh, so you know, we'll, we'll, it's not going to be out of nowhere. It's not going to be overnight. This is going to be something, you know, we're, we're clearly thinking about it and preparing for it now because we don't want that to happen. So, um, it's, it's going to take some time, but, uh, one of the things that Mark and I were discussing is utilizing GitHub projects. There's, uh, the new GitHub projects, uh, versus the old GitHub projects. I don't know what the functionality difference is between the two. Uh, but, um, in terms of using it as an organizational tool, similar to like Epics and Jira, um, having the GitHub project and it's all its associated tasks would give us a centralized location. Uh, tasks can be added at any point in time. They can have the checkboxes there. We can break it down so that they're very small, digestible pieces. So like we're going to need to update screenshots in some places. We're going to need to update documentation. We're going to need to move documentation. We're going to need to make sure that uh, you know, the, the, like the, like I said, the tutorials, each one of those could be its own separate ticket. So there's ways that we can organize this and make it a lot easier on, uh, ourselves and the community as a whole. Uh, cause I, you know, ideally we'd have help with doing all of this. It wouldn't just be a one or two person effort. Um, but if we can have a nice digestible track of where we're at, what needs to be done and what has been done, what still needs to be done, you know, that's a huge win in my head uh, just for simplicity and organization. So, um, Death, uh, Bruno, Chris, any thoughts, ideas, any like new insights that you've come up with since last session? Oh. Yo. All right. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, again, just things to continue thinking about. We'll continue. We'll. I'll be talking about this from here till it happens, basically. So it's not going to stop. 
Um, but yeah, it's it, these are things that we're thinking about, and these are the conversations that we're having to try and figure out the best way to ensure everyone is safe, basically, when it comes to time to make this change. Um, that could be a real uh, upsetting change for some folks, depending on how uh, enmeshed their work is with Blue Ocean. Um, hopefully it's not that serious, but we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that covers the agenda that I had brought today for today's meeting. Um, any other thoughts, ideas, any items to share before we wrap up? No, Kingdom Black. All right. Thank you, Kevin. No, for me too. Okay. Thank you both very much. So we'll wrap up the meeting in just a moment here. Uh, recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours, as always. And until next week, take care. Stay safe. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on uh, IRC, Gitter channels, or uh, in the community discourse. And uh, yeah, until then, we'll take care. Have a good day. See you there. Bye. Yeah.